Ahoy! There are some very important combat changes coming into New World soon. Dave, one of the New World devs, posted about this on the forums, so let's go through it. Hello everyone! We wanted to provide an update around combat balance. As you may know, we are always reading feedback, tuning, testing and iterating on weapons, their perks and combat. There are a few trends that have emerged that we have been internally testing balance changes around, namely for fire staff, bow, musket, hatchet and greatsword. The initial weapon and perk updates will be coming to the PTR in the very near future with the aim to improve the viability of magical weapons in PvE and some PvP scenarios and ranged weapons in PvE scenarios. On the other side of the coin, we are testing changes to reduce the power of some melee weapons and ranged weapons in PvP. In addition to weapons, we are also reviewing equip loads to ensure a good balance between survivability and utility. We look forward to hearing your feedback to some of these changes when they become available in PTR. As part of our commitment to always be iterating the combat balance in New World, there may be more changes through the course of the PTR. Based on this post, my very first recommendation is stop looking for gear on the trading post unless you know exactly what you want and you expect it to still be effective even if there are changes to the gear. I am not going to buy any of the weapons that are listed in here for now and I'm not going to buy any armor anymore until I know more about this patch because it may just end up not being useful afterwards anymore. So what exactly can we expect from this patch? Let's begin with the weapons. The first thing they mention is the fire staff and they say they want to increase the viability of magical weapons in PvE. Now I'm not sure why other magical weapons are not listed in the same breath here, but I imagine that in the case of the fire staff they may also be looking at PvP buffs at the same time. Mind you, I do believe that we may have reached a point where the perception of the fire staff is actually worse than the weapon is, especially in PvP. I've seen quite a few people playing Fire Staff lately, and especially if you're using Flamethrower, you can put out some pretty significant damage. The Fire Staff had this very weird balance cycle of being somewhat overpowered at some point because of a lot of bugs that it had, then the bugs were fixed but the nerfs still came in, and then it got nerfs and nerfs and nerfs, and eventually they started buffing it again but everyone kind of still feels like it's just getting nerfed, which honestly fair enough given the general perception of how it was treated. So at this point it's a meme that if any weapon is overperforming the Fire Staff will be the one getting a nerf. I don't think the Fire Staff will actually be getting a nerf though, I'm expecting some degree of a buff here. For the bow things may be different. It is mentioned that they want to buff ranged weapons in PvE scenarios. Even though the bow is actually one of the better ranged PvE weapons, I could see it receiving some degree of buffs for PvE. I do not imagine that the bow would get buffs for PvP. If anything, it's more likely that it would get some degree of nerfs in PvP. And the same is also true for the musket. While Benedict G's speedrunning group has actually ran a musket for one particular scenario, in Anyat specifically, it's not generally a highly regarded PvE weapon. So I would not at all be surprised to see some PvE buffs. On the other hand, I would also not at all surprised to see some PvP nerfs to the musket. The last nerf that was intended to decrease the damage on long ranges basically did almost nothing, especially if the musket user is using an int gem that is not affected by the range decrease. What did something was the change to the empowering shooter stance, but generally they said that we can expect more changes to the musket in the future. I would likely expect something that pushes it more towards mid-range instead of long range and maybe in return also buffs certain aspects of it that allow it to compete better when enemies get closer to it. With the hatchet, I think the path is very clear. There's one aspect that everyone complains about when it comes to the hatchet, and it's always the same thing. I have seen some people complain about the hatchet tracking, but honestly, compared to some other melee weapons, it is not actually that good. It's okay, it's decent, but it's by far not the best tracking weapon, or even close to that. So I don't think they're going to be touching that. I think the big elephant in the room with the hatchet is to fight death. It makes the hatchet way too effective in PvE, it's a super easy safety net, and the same thing is true in PvP. A lot of people are basically running hatchet offhands just for defy death and barely use it. I also hope that when they are reworking potentially those aspects of the hatchet, they also fix the throwing hatchet issues at the moment, because that is just frustrating, I don't even know why they're letting it be in the game for this long. I've talked about this already, like the animation problems that the hatchet has right now. With the greatsword it's also very obvious that we're going to see nerfs. If you're interested in my suggestions on how exactly to balance the greatsword better, you can check the linked video in the corner or at the end, I talk about that in great detail there. 
But what I think is that we'll definitely see some form of nerfs either to the damage or to the tracking or to both. Probably something that at least affects the heavy attack somehow. My speculation goes in line with what the devs are saying in the post. They're saying they want to reduce the power of some melee weapons and ranged weapons in PvP, so that matches it. And then ranged weapons and magical weapons are supposed to be buffed in PvE mainly. So that is my overall expectation in terms of changes that we're likely seeing for the weapons. However, there is also another change here that I personally find more interesting because it could be much more far-reaching than an individual weapon. They say they are reviewing equip loads. Now, that can mean a lot of different things. It could mean something as simple as looking at the dodge stagger that they basically introduced, where when you get hit with a melee attack, your dodge range is shorter afterwards. I know that a lot of ranged players are very unhappy with that one. But they do specifically mention survivability and utility here. And this is something that is generally interesting in the context of light rolls versus medium rolls versus heavy rolls. Survivability and utility with dodging comes from two different things. On one hand you have the iframes, the immunity frames, from dodging where you simply can't get hit or targeted by most attacks. And on the other hand you have the distance that you can create between yourself and the enemy. So if you for example take the light roll, then you will create great distance and you have the iframe along with that. Whereas with a medium dodge you have more iframes because you have less stamina used per dodge but you have not nearly the same range when it comes to dodging, so your utility in that regard is significantly lower and that obviously also affects your survivability. I'm somebody who never actively used medium, I've always either been light or heavy, but I personally believe that medium is absolutely getting the short end of the stick at the moment when it comes to the distance covered versus the amount of dodges and so on. I think this is not true for wars, because wars are just a completely different playing field, where chasing enemies for most players doesn't matter nearly as much, and survivability and clumps and stuff like that is more important, so that's where medium still has a place. But in Outpost Rush, you will hardly ever see anyone in medium, and even in arenas it's not exactly common. Even with all the dodge changes and so on, it is still extremely difficult for a medium player to chase a light player at all because the dodge distance and the recovery afterwards is just way too short or too bad when it comes to chasing someone who's running away from you in a straight line. This has been the case ever since they removed the sheath animation cancel mechanic that would take away the slowdown because that was the last time where it kind of worked with medium even though you had to constantly sheath spam because you're dodging so much. I hated the mechanic back then because it basically gave me carpal tunnel just from doing it but at the same time they never really compensated the medium dodge for losing this whereas for the light roll it's less of an issue because the roll itself is further. As such, I'm inclined to think or at least hoping that they might do something about the medium dodge to make it more viable in places outside of war. But there could be even more to it. They could have a more fundamental look at armor as a whole. For example, it's possible that they're not even happy with the armor combinations that people are using at the moment and they would rather have light people not be able to wear medium chests or medium people not be able to wear heavy chests. This would obviously be a very drastic overhaul, which would probably upset quite a few people for a little bit at least. But I honestly would be kind of happy to see something like this happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be this crazy. It doesn't have to be like everyone has to just fully be in the armor weight that they want to be. But I do think that throwing the whole meta out of the window essentially and forcing people to regear, especially those who have been sitting on their best in slot that they got three companies ago uh, for ages now, could be extremely refreshing for the game, especially at a time where there's not that much new content added. It would add a ton of testing and theory crafting content and trying to figure out the new best in slot and trying to figure out your new best gear. So I personally would like it. I know it would also upset a lot of people. I don't know if they want to take that risk. And one more thing that I'm really hoping they look at when it comes to equip loads are the armor weights for shields. This is actually a very interesting topic because there is more than just one way to solve it. I'd like to talk about that in more detail, so if you'd like to hear that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. That video will probably be coming out in the next days. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video, and thank you for watching. Geek Sloth, out.